Hi, well, time for my six month build update. And uh, actually it's six months and uh, one week since I started uh, this Bearhawk project. So this last month has been characterized um, pretty much by painting. It's been a huge learning curve. Um, I've done one prior video on some of the, the woes that I was having with my painting. It's been a very, very steep learning curve. But um, anyway, thankfully it, it has been uh, a lot of learning and uh, I've made a lot of progress with it. This is where I'm at at the moment. This was today's job. And uh, you can see here all the parts of the boot cowl. And uh, the, these pieces here are um, the panels that go underneath the doors and all the boot cowl pieces. Um, Got the ones here that I, I split, um, put the knacker uh, vents in them. They they go on the on the forward part of the boot cow. So it's been a huge project. Um, to be honest, one that I didn't enjoy a whole lot um, compared to the rest of the build, and that's largely because I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but anyway, what I have done is uh, over the last. Uh, three or four weeks I've got myself into a bit of a system out of necessity I come out here every morning I uh, drain the air compressor I get um, suited up and uh, assemble the spray gun I've um, I've taken to disassembling the spray gun uh, every day once I finish the job and I put it in a bucket of water I take all the parts um, apart the springs come out the needle valve the whole lot and I learned that the hard way. And uh, so what happens is when you, when you start spraying, there's all sorts of things that can go wrong. And there is a reason, I think, why spray painters do an apprenticeship. Um, you know, it's probably uh, thinking that you're going to be able to, uh, or, or in my case, that I was going to be able to learn to spray paint on the job is probably a bit like a concert pianist <laughs> reading how to play the piano out of a book and then going um, to the Royal Albert hall on a Saturday night and think he's going to just be able to knock knock a few uh, concertos together. It's just not going to happen. Um, but anyway, uh, everything that, every mistake that could be made, I have made it some um, part of the project. Thankfully, um, what I did um, at one, one um, part was I sanded the fuselage back. I spent a day doing that, learned from my mistakes, regrouped my thoughts and got back into it. So, where I'm at at the moment, the fuselage has actually come together quite well. It's got two small areas that I will still give some attention to. Both of them are on the top. I got some paint runs there. I decided to mask it off rather than repaint the whole top. I masked it off and painted it. Um, got a reasonable job there. There's a, a, you know, a little bit of solvent popping going on there. But I came in in the evening to... Um, take the masking tape off while the paint was still wet. The problem was if I made a mistake, it was going to get paint everywhere. So I left the masking tape in place. And as a result, it has dried with fairly hard edges. Now, this morning, my, my friend Bob, Bob's 82 years old. He's a retired aircraft engineer, and he's learned a thing or two over the years about small aircraft. And he showed me how to um, essentially buff it out with a, a very fine uh, 2000 grit sandpaper. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to get bent out of shape over that. The rest of the fuselage I'm very, very happy with. I've, I've got a real gloss on the whole thing. The tails come up beautifully, the sides, and um, all of these boot cowl parts seem to have come up quite nicely, actually. Um, yeah, so th that's where it is at the, at the moment. I'll, I'll give you a look at the doors. I did the doors yesterday. I'm very, very happy with how they came up. What's left to do on the fuselage paint-wise is I've got to paint the front lower door pillar where the door closes up against. And I'll probably do that in the next day or two. And I still have the um, inspection port covers for the rear fuselage. Now, I can paint them up. I'll probably do that in the next day or two as well at the same batch. But um, before I do that, I've got to uh, drill some holes through them and actually split a couple of them so that they can be assembled um, properly. And <laughs> I back myself into a corner with that. <laughs> I match drilled all the holes without... Um, the uh, cutting the holes for the elevator tubing and now I don't know um, how to do that properly probably what I'm going to do someone suggested why don't you go and buy some uh, clear plastic and, and make a template out of the clear plastic and I think that's a really good idea um, yeah so it's coming along really well I feel like I'm uh, I've made a huge amount of progress with the painting learnt a lot and I'm starting to see light at the end of the tunnel um, with finishing the fuselage
So let's go and take a look at the doors. And um, just while, while we're out here, before we leave, the next major part of the project, once I've finished all the painting, is going to be on the instrument panel. That's where I'm headed. I, I have taken delivery of the avionics and I've taken delivery of black uh, Kydex panels and I'm gonna make uh, the wing root panels, um, a, a rear panel, in there and also all the footwell panelling and the interior door panels out of Kydex. I'll show you that. Yeah so I've disassembled the, uh, the spray gun and uh, put it in a bucket of water and if you do that quickly as soon as you, you finish the spray painting um, it stops the paint from hardening inside the gun. And I learned this the hard way. <laughs> I came out one morning and uh, I had actually cleaned the gun the day before. I put it all back together but unbeknown to me some paint had hardened inside it. So I took great care stirring the paint and mixing it all up, adding the hardener, thinning it down with the water, poured it into the spray gun and immediately it started, started to drip out the nozzle and I didn't know what was going on. So it turned out what it, what it was, I think, um, the, the paint from the previous day's work had hardened in there and the needle valve wasn't able to close properly. So you can imagine my frustration because now I've got the hardener in the paint and uh, you know I've got three hours until I have to throw it out and this stuff's really expensive so um, what I did I poured it back into a bucket disassembled the uh, paint gun now because the paint's hardened you've got to use solvent so I spent half an hour doing it um, really thoroughly and what I do now every time I finish straight into a bucket of water disassemble it and uh, when I'm ready to start painting the next day I, I put it all back together and off we go so this is the uh, rear cargo door and uh, that's one of the uh, that's the front left door um, I've actually got them sitting in the, in the back of my truck at the moment just to get them out of the workshop so they don't get any overspray on them. Really, really happy with how those came, up, came out. I've got very sharp edges around the door handle and the, and the key lock and I've got a good gloss on the, on the paint finish there. So um, they, they went fantastically well actually. Now that, that's the front right door there obviously. And uh, yeah, once again, also the rear cargo door came up really well. I have noticed a bit of an issue here. Um, you're probably struggling to see, but I have already drilled the holes here. There's a, there's a frame that goes inside, so I'm going to put um, acrylic paint in there. The frame then encapsulates that from the inside and held in place by rivets. And I, I realized yesterday it's going to be very, very difficult to actually drive those rivets. And I hadn't thought of that. I think we've come up with a solution. So this, this is the uh, black Kydex uh, sheet. It's very, very flexible, very thin. Uh, it is uh, quite heavy, I think. I probably won't be using too much of it in the aircraft because of its weight. But now this is heat moldable, so I've, I've got a lot of research to do on this and uh, I'll, I'll put that in a future video. So all my D Dynon avionics arrived uh, about two weeks ago and I, I wanted to uh, give you a look at what I've got. Pretty much gone the whole hog with them and uh, I've got things like ADS-B, transponder, all, all that kind of thing. So the aircraft will be fully equipped to be uh, ADS-B compliant. Um, in New Zealand, they've just moved the deadline to 2022, but I can't see any, any issues with getting it compliant uh, straight off the, straight off the get-go. So um, what I did was I um, decided to order everything. It's all Dynon products, but I've ordered through Advanced Flight Systems. They're owned by Dynon. And the advantage of going through um, adv Advanced Flight Systems is that they will um, not only just sell you the equipment, they'll piece it all together, build the wiring looms. Now, a lot of the wiring looms are off the shelf, but quite a few of them aren't. And that means that they've been able to do all the custom wiring uh, for me, test it out, get all the settings, um, everything set up, and then box it up and courier it down here to me in New Zealand. So that's the uh, Dynon uh, HDX. Um, it's about a 10 and a half inch screen, decent size. I've got two of them actually, so it's going to be um, a dual panel and uh, that should be a really nice piece of kit. This is the Adahars here. I won't actually take it out of the wrapper, but you, you can see just beside my hand how small it is. That has to be mounted uh, level, I believe. It's also got um, wiring here with an air temperature um, probe attached to it that'll probably run up inside the wing, but a very, very small unit. There. Another tiny unit here is the, uh, the ADS-B, and uh, that's, that's for picking up uh, traffic and weather. So this, this is the transponder module 
um, it's the 261. Um, once again, just blown away by how small it is and uh, comparable size to the VHF COM. So that's that's the COM there that will go in the avionics rack. And this is the uh, radio head here. Very neat little unit. And the notable thing about this um, is that the depth is just so small. So that'll mount really easily into the uh, instrument panel. And moving along, that's the engine management system there. Again, um, quite small, you can see beside my hand, this is the GPS aerial. GPS is actually built into the aerial and I've got quite a long uh, harness made up to run, run that down to the uh, avionics rack. And the backup battery, not completely necessary. In the end, I decided to get one. The main function, okay, two functions. One is during startup, it'll keep your uh, displays running while the engine is uh, being cranked over by the battery. It obviously is a backup should the main battery fail. I was in two minds about that. As I say, in the end, I decided to go with them. I've got two of them. Not completely sold on the idea, but yeah. Now with the intercom, Dynon only make a two-place panel mounted in intercom. And that was a problem for me because I've got a four-place aircraft. So they have sold me this uh, PS Engineering PM3000. Now, interesting little thing. Four-place intercom for sure. Panel mounted, apparently. Now, whilst it's not huge... It comes uh, without a separate uh, radio head, if you like, so the whole thing has to be mounted on the panel. Bearing in mind, my panel is hinged, so I've got a bit of a problem here, and I don't know how to resolve that yet. I'm giving it some thought. It's a neat little unit, but it would have been nice if it was separated to an intercom head that was panel mounted, and the guts of it um, put back in the avionics rack. So apparently, this uh, faceplate comes off, it's held on by two screws, and that's what retains it onto the instrument panel. The thing that would worry me, it's, whilst it's not super heavy, it's also not um, without weight, and I think if you did that and get, get a bit of turbulence, I really think it needs uh, some sort of retaining bracket at the back, so I'm still working over my mind how to uh, go about mounting it. So the one big difference with going through advanced flight systems is I got this box uh, as part of the kit, and essentially the whole box is just full of harnesses and uh, they are all labelled so that's transponder, ADS-B, Navcom etc etc um, you know some of them are quite big this is the uh, network connectors for the multifunction displays and so on and so on there's quite a few they're all specific lengths and then you come to this one here okay so that for me to make this up would have um, been just a heap of work. This is the intercom, the audio panel cabling, and all of the headset jacks. There's a lot of work in there. And then this this bag here, you know, that's, that's quite big just in itself. And that is full of all the uh, engine instrument couplings. Over here, this is the, uh, the main guts of the system. And this is the... Advanced Flight Systems Dynon uh, Advanced Control Module. Everything plugs in here. You've got positive and negative uh, feeds on there, and it's actually not not too big, just to give you an idea. And it's quite uh, quite a thin little unit. So that's going to go up behind the uh, instrument panel somewhere in, in the avionics rack. And uh, all of the circuit breaking is done internally on this. It's all software driven. Now, I paid a bit extra, quite a lot extra actually, and got them to make up this, uh, custom make this little switch module here. And I'm very, very happy with how, it, how it's come out. Not sure exactly what part of the panel it's going to sit in. It's very simple. I've got a master switch, an alternator switch, and an avionics switch. And then two more, one for the boost pump and one for the lights, and that's it. And part of my philosophy with that, I haven't got any backup instruments. I'm going to try and get away without a backup compass. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that. But let's face it, I'm going to have probably a phone with a compass on it, um, on me at all times. I'll be looking out the window and following the valleys and the roads. My primary flight display is going to be the windshield. That's what I'm going to be looking at most of the time. And I've got two backup displays, the uh, Dynon HD exits. That's, that's my general philosophy. I'm trying to keep it as, look, there's a lot of electronics there. I'm not kidding anyone. But that, that aside, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. And I, th I think I'm going to pull that off. I want a very basic uh, looking instrument panel. So that's where I am at the uh, six month mark. I'm still thoroughly enjoying the build uh, project overall. Um, it's progressing very, very well. And 
where I'm at at the moment, I'm, I'm planning to get the painting finished in the next couple of weeks, um, at which point I'll have the gear legs painted as well, and I plan to get it up on the gear legs. The next uh, large project is to get the avionics installed. I think there's probably a good four weeks of work there. And at that point, it's going to be ready to install the engine. I'll, I'll be doing another update before then. Stay tuned. <laughs>